Welcome to Mark D. Baker. My name is Mark Taylor. In this video, we're going to be detailing a little black cap chickadee bird. It's made out of basswood. And we have the form shaped roughly into what a bird would look like. And I'm going to introduce you to some tools, some specialty tools that you can use to, to advance this bird and make it look realistic. Now, you don't have to use the tools I have. And I'm going to try to cover as many different types and styles, but once, the, once your carving hits this stage right here, there's unlimited ways of achieving uh, a realistic looking bird. I'll show you the ones that I use. There's several different types. I'll show you the tools I use, the different types of bits that I use, the burner that I use. So, come on over to the bench and I'll show you. Alright, I made this as a little dust collection system. All it is, is plywood frame. I believe I got the plans for this out of like woodworking magazine. In the back here has just some computer motors and I believe I got these from uh, Northern Tool. Uh, they're, they're 120 uh, volt computer fans. I put three of them in. A little frame here. A little bit of that hardware cloth and then a couple of these. <clears throat> and it really pulls when you're using like a Dremel or a Fordham or a, I have a little ram here. When you're using these power rotary tools it creates a very fine dust and this helps it keep keeps it contained more or less. I also use this when I'm burning because it produces a smoke that <clears throat> if if it's pulled away from your face, it just doesn't burn your eyes and, and uh get too much up in your sinuses and kind of mess you up. So this is coming very handy, very useful, works great. Alright, I'll talk really quick about the different types of tools that I'm using. I'll start off with the Dremel. If, if you have a Dremel, are you gonna buy a Dremel? Do yourself a favor for $10. Go ahead and get this bit right here. <clears throat> it is a hand tightening bit. Fits on just like this. And what that allow you to do is change different shank sizes really quick, just a, about a second to, to loosen this. Take one out, put another one in, tighten it back up. It's going to save you a lot of time messing with uh, collets and all this mess you don't need. Once, once you change over, you'll thank me. Next, we got, as you progress and, and get more advanced, these are called, uh, these bits are called ruby bits. They actually have ground ruby in them. They cut smoother and finer than diamond bits. Diamond bits uh, tend to be uh, really, really aggressive and they'll tend to fuzz up the wood when you're, when you're doing some fine detail work. The ruby will, especially into the basswood, uh, will make it nice and smooth, uh, very controllable. Uh, it, it will change the way you use a rotary tool. I keep all my ruby bits separate from the diamond bits. I don't want to get them confused, so I keep all my ruby bits in here. I got a whole bunch of diamond bits here, and I have some more over in another case. Next tool we have is the burning tool. 
it's basically a, this is a rheostat and it heats up this tip which is sharp like a knife I do sharpen it and, and strop it so it is sharp like a knife um, and you can for really really fine work you can lower the number to like a two or a three and if you need to burn really deep or hot you can crank it up very useful tool and they, a lot of times you can get different tips too this is a, another tip <clears throat> another tool that I use and this is a, a ram and what this is basically is kind of like a Dremel um, it it does a forward and reverse which is helpful when you get into really tight areas um, it's a, a bit of a fancier tool. It's a, it's a much more expensive uh, tool than the Dremel. The Dremel is a a um, hundred dollar tool, um, and this is uh, about a two hundred and fifty dollar tool. <clears throat> the uh, it doesn't heat up, and you can see how you can hold it in a pencil grip so you can get finer detail. And, and now this chuck only accepts the smaller shanks, so it's designed for detail. So this is something that a more advanced carver would, would have. And in this little tin here, in this tin here, I have white ceramic stones. And these are the finest stones that I have. This is what I use really, really fine detail. Uh, there's a little ruby in there too. A small ruby ball there. But these, these ceramic, um, white ceramic is a very, very fine stone. Great for putting in uh, very fine detail. Some dividers are very useful. If you're going to uh, measure distances, like you'll, you'll see me use these dividers when I'm trying to find the uh, distance for the eyes. The eyes have to be pretty precise. So I'll measure from the, I'll measure the beak to make sure the beak is properly placed. And then I'll measure from the tip of the beak to the center of the eye and mark that. And then I'll triangulate that if I can, off of another mark from somewhere else, which I know is accurate, and uh, and we'll mark the eye there. And of course, I can't forget my knife. I will use this from here on out to do details because the details are going to get very fine. So I'll use a brand new blade. I will strop it polish it nicely and I will use that to do any kind of relief along the the primary feathers or tail feathers um, we're going to be using the stone neither the Dremel or the ram and then uh, finish off with burning like I said so many people do it different ways here i'm just going in and burning the the outlines of these feathers some people do this with a stone and i just kind of lose track using a stone this gives me a more uh, distinct line to follow and then when i'm done with this you could go in with either stone and, and relieve it with a Dremel or knife or just sandpaper. It, it doesn't take much to relieve the difference between these feathers. It's very, very subtle. Now you can see as I'm rounding these corners, I'm twisting the pen and twisting the bird slightly to get the curve in these feathers in one fluid motion. 
And I really want to stress, you don't need a bunch of fancy tools to do carving, even this style carving. This can all be done with a, a an X-Acto, $4 X-Acto knife. It just will take a little longer for, instead of using the Dremel for, uh, in the stones for doing the Dremel work, you can just take a paint stick, chop it into little sections, split those sections off and, and glue sandpaper to them, and that'll work fine as well. Now here I've turned up the heat because I'm covering more ground. As, as the heat pen touches the wood, uh, it'll do a burn, and then as you drag it, it will cool off. So you'll learn just by doing, by practicing, uh, using the heat, heat pen um, as you touch something and pull along, you'll see what speed you can go, and if you need to move quicker, you'll turn the heat up a little bit more. And when I do undercuts, I'll turn the heat up even more to do an undercut and clean up an area. And just so you know, this video right here is sped up twice the normal speed. So I am taking my time in doing this. Outlining these uh, feathers is pretty important. You want to get them as accurate as you can. Now here I'm turning up the heat even more. And I'm doing these undercuts. You can see by the smoke rolling off of these burns. It is, I'm really moving through the wood pretty rapidly there in this undercut. Watch this. Turning down the heat. I blew on the tip. It cools it rapidly. So that's another way to do it is uh, if your adjustment isn't working right and you, and you see it's burning too hot, you could just blow on that tip. It cools it very quickly. Just doing some little touch-ups there. And right here, I'm laying that blade flat and riding that line. And this really creates separation just about as much separation as you'll need between the feathers. This gives it a stair-step effect. I did the tail feathers the same way. I will go back and, and clean up the, you need like charcoal or, or real burnt wood there with the fine knife or some sandpaper. Uh, but this is how you get that stair-step effect on the feathers. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the chest and belly section, drawing in the little feathers that are from under the beak and, and chest area all the way to the tail, underneath the tail. And I'm using this as a ruby ball and I'm using this to graduate to make it smoother. There's, like I said, there's really no hard edges on a bird. <laughs> so, uh, smooth out those areas. And now I'm just going in underneath all these little feathers that I drew in and just relieving a little bit, the slightest bit. And it's just. Uh, a suggestion of these feathers and I will come in later sand to smooth these out a bit and burn them. I will texture them with a, a stone and burn them. Now here I'm moving to a cone shaped ceramic bit. I'm putting in this very fluffy area here 
and and this is more almost like a fluffy hair than feather area and so this will simulate that so if you notice I'm going in with the bit pushing down with the medium pressure and as I pull along I'm lifting so it gives it a very uh, wispy look it makes it it, it kind of has a hair look to it here a very wispy look and and I will come back with the burner and lightly go in to deepen some of these marks and to accent and to help the transition from the feathers to this fuzzy area Now it's pretty hard to see here the, the detail. Uh, what you really need to do when you're texturing like this is have one light source from the side and, and the shadows will cast and you'll really be able to see it well. It's not, just not good for filming. Here I'm going in with the ruby bit. It's a flame shaped, so it's thin at the top and kind of bulges out a bit near the base. And I'm going in and cleaning up all these burn marks. I'm just outlining the feathers really lightly. They're really easy to see. And especially right here on the bottom, you can see these burn marks and if I were trying to do this with a diamond bit, it would just be way too aggressive. With this ruby bit, it leaves it smooth. You can go with a light touch and, and it can be very delicate. Or you can go in a little more heavy handedly and, and really remove some wood. So great bits. Love the ruby bits. With the ruby bit, I've cleaned up on the on these feathers here, on the, all these little feathers on the bottom, I've gone in and relieved up along the top of each one of these feathers. The ruby ball leaves a like a dual cut line and all we need is one line that outlines the feather and I've relieved the other line with that little ruby bit. Left it very smooth and now I'm gonna go in and texture and what I'm doing is twisting or, or pulling this ceramic bit, cone-shaped ceramic bit here, one way and then the other way. I'm, I'm swinging it to the left and swinging it to the right because the feathers don't grow in straight. So you want a, a variety. See, there's just a little bit of a twist there in those feathers, so they're coming off either sweeping left or right. Gives it a much more realistic look. So let's go ahead and move ahead to uh, the finished area on the bottom here. It's ready to burn now. And you can see it's just a subtle, the, the chest feathers have a subtle feathering texture to it. This is a disc shape. And I'm using this to give me a little bit more depth here. I really want this uh, upper part of the feathers here to look very fluffy. I texture this in, and once again, going left and right, you can see me moving around. Flip the bird over to help with the natural curve. Your, your hand, when you pull the stone across, has a natural curve to use that to your advantage. Flip the bird back and forth and run that uh, stone in a, in a slight curve, left and right, and it'll look more realistic. So we'll continue to do this all across this upper part of the bird. Here we go. I'll also come in and burn this a little later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.